Hello, this is Pastor Laura, and I am a servant at St. Paul Lutheran Church in um, Asheville, Ohio. And happy April Fool's Day to you. We are falling down on our parenting responsibilities and have not offered any April Fool's jokes to our older kids who love them today. So um, pray for us here. We, we are trying to juggle too many details. So um, you're sharing with me my Lenten devotions, and I have been exploring Marks of the Christian um, by David L. Miller, and um, it has been a, a worthwhile journey for me. So um, we are on day 34 of the 40 days of Lent, and if you're in this in another time of year and you're doing your 40 days of journey in the wilderness, that's fine. I mean, 40 days are so helpful. So um, we are doing Knowing God's Hospitality today. Again, we are in Romans 12, 13b is our verse. Extend hospitality to strangers. We've been on this verse for a little while. We have done seeing the familiar stranger. And um, this is who we are as Christians. And hospitality itself, it's a mark of who we are. And um, so here we go, knowing God's hospitality. Again, everything about our Christian life is rooted in what God shows us, gives us, grants us, uh, blesses us with. And here is um, David L. Miller's um, reflection. Your hospitality knows no bounds, dearest friend. You are the eternally gracious host, welcoming me into broad and open spaces where my soul can breathe. Dixie purchased an annual pass to the Arboretum this year. She takes her camera and walks through woods and glades. Sometimes she takes out grandsons to the children's garden, and they play largely unhindered by normal constraints, running in fields and splashing in the water, soaking themselves. It's an open place for all of us. I walk there with Dixie, drawing in the sweet air of pine needles. I discover that pressing schedules and incessant obligations don't exist on forest paths. My heart grows larger and more generous than normal, more humble and quiet. I feel my smallness amid the greatness of all you have made, Holy One. It's an open space that opens space in the heart. I breathe and you are the air. I walk and return to the garden of beginnings, Eden. In silent communion, I discover you are the host of a vast home where I am always welcome. You made the world as a garden of freedom for our home, filling it with beauty and wonder, playfulness and joy. There is space for the heart to roam and wonder and praise. Yes, we despoil your creation and abuse it. The garden of delight now holds threat and we flinch at the snap of a twig in the bushes. Still great and open spaces awaken awareness of your infinite grace in the immensity of your heart. It was always your intention to enter and share the home you made for us. Sin didn't make you do it. Your love did. And when our brother Jesus appeared, he opened his arms to welcome all we are, all that we have been and will be. Abide in me, says Jesus, for my heart is large and encompassing generous beyond imagination. Come and play as unhindered as children, 
free from all that wounds and constrains the soul's hunger to love. My heart is your home. One of the beautiful visions that come from, it was the movie, The Shack, I think it was, um, where there's this vision of heaven where Jesus is playing with the children in this open meadow. And that's the image that comes to me. I also hear stories of um, kids out at the farm. I have to have a little something to drink. Still using my Christmas cup, be merry. <laughs> I think that's a good message for all year round. So anyhow, we I hope you have, that's the thing that country people and country children, they, um, we have got to play in the open spaces. And I don't think we realize how much a gift that's been and when, city people long for green spaces. It is uh, a holy longing um, to have open spaces. So, well, that is, I don't know if that was extremely theologically necessary, but <laughs> it's one of the gifts of country people um, that we get to share about God's hospitality. All right. We have some biblical wisdom from John 15. As the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. John 15, that was verses 9 and 11. I've never read that verse in the perspective of God's hospitality in the open spaces. That's good for me to have that to look at. Okay, our theological thought is, um, and this is a passage that makes us love our earth and care for our earth. Um, theological thought comes from Matthew Fox, Original Blessing, published by Jeremy P. Tarcher, Putnam Publishers in the year 2000. That must have been a re, a re, Publishing, because I read Original Blessing in the 90s. So, I did. How old am I? <laughs> the Creator God has spread out for our delight a banquet that was 20 billion years in the making. A banquet of rivers and lakes, of rain and sunshine, of rich earth and of amazing flowers of handsome trees and dancing fishes, of contemplative animals and of whistling winds, of dry and wet seasons, of cold and hot climates. And so are we, blessing ourselves, invited to the banquet. And I think, knowing that Matthew Fox is a from that Catholic tradition, maybe he means, and so are we, blessing ourselves, invited to the banquet. And that's part of their tradition, to do that blessing of themselves before taking communion. So I wonder if that's his perspective. So, Whistling winds are what we are getting today, and I hope all of you are, have been safe from storm fronts that moved through here in Midwest and Central United States. 
so much a sign that um, there's such mighty weather around us. And um, we have to reach out to one another when that interrupts our human life lives. We have to help each other on to the next space. So, all right, questions to ponder. When do open spaces appear in your heart? Maybe it's not in that um, walking space at the Arboretum. Maybe it's different. How might creation be a spiritual practice for you? And where do you experience God's welcome so that you feel truly at home? Here's a fragment from Psalm 18. They confronted me in the day of my calamity, but the Lord was my support. He brought me out into a broad place. He delivered me because he delighted in me. That was from Psalm 18. He brought me out into a broad place. And he delivered me because he delighted in me. All right, here are questions. Um, for those of you that are writing, letting both parts of your brain engage, all the parts of your brain when you get that hand going and thinking. So what experiences or awareness were stirred by today's reflection? Or you can write about, when is creation a spiritual banquet for you? Slowly reflect on the final paragraph in today's reflection. What desires are moved in you? I feel like we need to look at that again. The final paragraph was Jesus saying, abide in me, for my heart is large and encompassing, generous beyond imagination. Come and play as unhindered as children, free from all that wounds and constrains the soul's hunger to love. My heart is your home. All right. So... What desires does that move in you? That invitation. All right, here's our prayer for today. Welcome me into your heart, O Lord, that my heart may be as big as yours. Amen. All right, that will be in our notes if you want to return to that. I always need to return to it. Welcome me into your heart, O Lord, that my heart may be as big as yours. Amen. All right, go in peace this day. May Christ go with you. Um, remember that tomorrow, if you're watching with me in real time, tomorrow is Palm Sunday, and we gather together to um, enter in to that Holy Week story, beginning with the triumphal entry of Jesus into Jerusalem and the beauty of recognition there of who he is, a son of God, and um, how Jesus lives that identity out, even in the passion story. So I look forward to this holy time. This is a time when many of my details are taken care of and it's time to enter in. So go in peace again, I say, and may Christ go with you.